80% of those who get COVID-19 will actually not need to be hospitalized. But we have been focusing primarily on trying to prevent the infection. And of course, that's a good idea because that will help us not to overwhelm the hospitals with the 20% that are needing those hospitalizations. And then we are focusing our attention on the 20% that actually do get hospitalized with all of the intensive care units and the need for more ventilators and personal protective equipment for the healthcare workers. And then maybe some drugs, none that are proven yet, that might actually help the situation. There's a lot of attention on those two areas as well there should be, but yet there's very little attention on the 80% that are told to go home because they don't have hypoxemia and they don't have shortness of breath yet. And they're told to just hunker down and if you get worse, come to the hospital, but they're not really told what to do. Well, how can you actually prevent being in that 20%? Or is there a way that we could expand that 80% to maybe be 85%, maybe 90%? That would alleviate the hospital system greatly. It would help humanity tremendously. And so this is where we need to focus our attention in helping these people to boost their immune system. And one of the ways in which we can do this is by boosting our innate immune system. What are those things? These are helping our monocytes to work better. Monocytes turn into macrophages and they actually can eat cells. They can eat bacteria. They can actually uh, present portions of those cells. So our secondary line of defense, the B cells can develop antibodies against those foreign invaders. And the T cells also can help to destroy uh, these uh, bad cells or viruses that get into those cells and the entire cell needs to sometimes be destroyed because they're virus manufacturers. And one of the ways in which we can do this at home would be through hydrotherapy. And so instead of just going home and hoping you don't get short of breath, why not do something that's been proven to actually help your monocytes, help your neutrophils, help your lymphocytes? And one of those simple things you can do is being illustrated right now as a preventive measure in a hot foot bath. Boosting the immune system, one of the things that helps our white blood cells and monocytes work better is to increase the body temperature. And for these individuals that have congestion, they have cold symptoms, they have nasal symptoms, as we increase the temperature with a hot foot bath, we also actually decrease the congestion. So it's not only helping our immune system, it is producing symptomatic relief of the congestion. We can breathe better. And as a result, we will end up possibly being in that 85% now instead of 80% or even 90% and not having to go to the emergency room and get hospitalized. And so what is happening with a hot foot bath is it's 102 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And please don't do this if you have advanced neuropathy like a diabetic that can't feel pain or temperature. If you can't feel pinprick or pain or temperature, you probably shouldn't do this because we don't want to burn anybody. And if the temperature goes above 110, you wouldn't necessarily know it. But for everybody else, they can get this hot foot bath. In the process, we want to also keep the head part cold. That will allow us to be able to increase the whole body core temperature without actually causing us to feel overheated or to have this big perspiration or we can't stand the heat, so to speak. And it allows us to be able to stand a little bit more and a little longer duration of this hot foot bath.